Hey guys, welcome to Let's Play Chrono Cross. Last time we finished the game, and I went into long explanations about plot and my review and all that stuff over the last little bit. Got a little bit more of that to go over, just like little things that I couldn't find a good kind of focus to talk about them. So, so I am going to work on those as we demonstrate what we have here. Now, what we have here and what I talked about toward the end of the uh, last episode is we have our completed file indicated by the yellow star. You select continue plus or sorry, continue on this. It will pop up a whole new menu, which will have new game plus and continue plus instead of new game continue. New game plus basically allows you to start over fresh with mm, the vast majority of your items, elements, uh, levels, stats, everything. Continue Plus allows you to continue on specific files in the same manner with all that same gear. I'll explain that a little bit more later, but in order to get the first of the uh, different endings, which is what we'll be doing going forward here, we just need to do a standard New Game Plus. And you've got things, I don't care. It's name Surge. And one of the two cutscenes, I think, in the game that's skippable. So I can skip over that. Don't have to uh, go through that. We got Van coming with us this time around. No turning back now. Now, an interesting note is I would have almost cut this entire section from the New Game Plus because there's very little we can do here that, you know, you would want to really do. Uh, first thing we're going to do, as before, customize. Set that over there. And let's take a good long look here. You know, we have all the equipment that we had before. What the game does is it auto-removes everything from your characters and puts it in a list and throws that in your inventory and loads that in. So it doesn't matter what we were equipping, Oh, we do get the plasma pistol, nice. And, but no monster mooning, because with what we were able to allocate and bring over... Oh, right, he has a couple of elements that are allocated automatically. Not every single element carries over, though. Uh, I have my black holes, I have my ultranovas. I've heard certain people say, and certain guides say, that you don't get to keep those, or you don't get to keep certain amounts of them. I've, I've got some now, so maybe they've modified this in the, uh, the remaster. But as you can see, the vast majority of elements I have with a few exceptions. We got the one and only Vigor elements, so if we were to go all the way through the game again, we could get a second one. We get to keep the field turning elements, the anti-whatever elements. A lot of our buffs and our debuffs, our healing, including holy healing, which is fantastic, full revival. You can actually double up on those. All of our traps. There is something missing here. No level 7 techs. If you look over at Kid there, I never even used it uh, previously, but and there is an achievement for some reason for using her level 7 tech, Hotshot, so I will be showing that off before the end of this series. But all of our level 7 techs that are not learned automatically, like the fan, are going to be removed. I did go back to his... Uh, this house, I guess it would have been in another world, no, in Homeworld, where he's uh, broke, and tried to deposit money in his piggy bank, as I've heard mentioned. He wasn't in my party at the time, and I wasn't able to do it, so you might require to bring him in the party in order to do that. But anyway, we have lots of power, you know, our stats have carried over, all of our strength, and all that other good stuff. One interesting note is I think there's supposed to be some way of like increasing our stats. Like as we regain characters, I think their stats might be 
kind of averaged out to be closer to what, uh, come on, to be closer to Surge, that's not going to help, don't need to fight you at the moment. Now we can skip through basically the whole brunt of this. Now one other thing of note is our key items are all missing, we only have two. The uh, time shifter that in the original version was exclusive to New Game Plus, and a new item, the Relief Charm. Relief Charm is pretty cool. Let's see, uh, can I activate it right now, or do I need to be on a save point? I need to be on a save point, so we can't do that at the moment. Um, do you have to go over here first, though? Fast forward over there. I'm surprised I squeezed through there. <laughs> Probably wasn't the smartest thing I ever tried to do. Yep, high in the sky. I'll skim through the dialogue if you're interested in looking at it. We saw it the original time that we came through here. So it's all, uh, all been gone over before. Yeah, there's only two cutscenes that are skippable in the game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, now that we have a PC version of the game, the modders are able to get in there and put a uh, put in a version where you can skip the cutscenes. But uh, yeah, I guess I wonder if you could technically just go into the data files and delete all the uh, video files and then that would be it. And instead of going to them, it would just go to wherever you would go next. I would think that might work. Don't, uh, don't take my word for it. I have not tested that. I take no responsibility if you break anything by doing it, but uh, yeah. An interesting thought anyway. Surge woke up to find the time egg in his hands. This allows us to take on the final boss at any point in time. He doesn't even jump to uh, throw them up this time, doesn't he do that normally? And as you go through the game, you can go and pick up all of the items that were there before such as the money under the bed. And wasn't there an element over here too? Nah, we're good. But there was an element over here. There we go. So yeah, you can pick up additional things if you're so inclined to do so. We're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna avoid talking to mom, avoid talking to everyone. There are a total of 11, according to most sources, uh, different endings. There's actually a modification on one of them that I will be showing off, so technically 12. One of them I will not be showing off, uh, and I already did it off screen. It's the bad ending, where you just go and you beat up the uh, Time Devourer over and over and over again until eventually it just dies to lack of HP. We've got about 15,000 HP, just like the uh, other Time Devourer that we fought in Terra Tower. So we made sure to pick up the Spectral Swallow so that we would have that here. And you'll notice we have a whole bunch of nice stuff here. You're going to want the green plate. The Time Devourer uses a lot of green elements early on in the fight. And the best way to speedline the whole process is to equip the green plate and not have to worry about healing. We've got lots of different options here. We get to keep the sunglasses. So I think I'm going to put those on. That'll give me some more damage. And a power seal. I want to go for the dragon's glory or another power seal. Probably the power seal. The interesting note here is, and I talked about this before, you lose all of your, all of your key items. And we have different colored brooches. We've got the black one. 
got the white one, the yellow one, the red one, the green one. All the way up. Sadly, we do not have the blue one. The only one that could have been useful because the final boss, the Time Devourer, can use Ice Blast. If it freezes you and you only have one party member, it's an instant game over. And it sucks. So, our only hope is to get lucky and not be frozen. Or he not cast it. Either one would work. So we'll go as much damage as we can muster. We're going to be focused on the physical side of things. I did not want to go in there. I am going to set up my elements and I will be right back. We don't need too much, but uh, we'll put on some decent stuff. All right, we finished setting up. So let's just take a quick look. It's very similar to stuff you've seen from me before. Uh, nothing too surprising here. Uh, we just want, you know, two or three, maybe even four of every color of element. So you'll see here I've put on some basic attacking uh, spells there. We've got some healing stuff. We've got Magna Gate. Um, so that can come in handy for us here as well. And what else? Magnified Diminish. Diminish might be a good idea in this fight. Uh, some extra healing. Again, more healing, some spells that I'm doubtful we'll ever use. Uh, one other thing, if I didn't mention, I think I neglected the, uh, of the elements that we have, level seven techs are gone. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that, but also all summon elements, regardless of whether you've trapped them or received them as part of the story, have been removed from your inventory. Uh, you get to keep all of your money, but because we don't have the Smith spirit, we're unable to do um, any crafting of ultimate or rainbow weapons at this point, so you'll have to have done those ahead of time. The Relief Charm allows you to replace Surge as a member in battle with any other character in your active party. Since I have nobody else here, there's not much I can do with that. Now we have to walk straight through... Um, Lizard Rock here, which is an area for some reason I've never been able to remember the name of. And once we've gone all the way through here, we can go over and challenge and take on the final boss right now. In order to get this particular ending that I'll be going for, you need to be able to do this once, uh, like with Surge alone. If you don't do this with Surge on his own, it will not work and you'll get a different ending. So yeah, this puts this over here. The uh, the crew's not here with us. Chrono, Luca, and Marley are not here. But we're pretty much ready to go. We want to do as much damage as possible. If you didn't have um, the green plate, obviously Prism Mail would be your best bet to reduce the damage as much as possible. But you really do want the green plate for this one. Uh, if you don't have sunglasses, again, there are other things. Uh, one other option, if you want to go more defensive, you could use... Uh, a red brooch because it protects against red status effects. There is a red status effect that you would like to avoid. Actually, before you, oh, I was about to say you should use the uh, star fragment. The star fragment is a key item, so you can't uh, have it at this point in the game. I was going to say use that because it predicts against all status effects, but no, it uh, will not help. It. Um, so yeah, I would use the red one to protect against confusion if. Yeah, the boss hits you with uh, Magma Burst, which I think is the only way it can inflict that. But the more damage you have, the better. You could also use the Moon Glasses if you happen to get those. That would be, uh, that would be nice. But yeah, when you're ready, let's go. Now, this will be the only time I'll be showing actually fighting and prepping for the uh, final boss because you'll notice we have no key items, no chrono cross. We have to whittle down 15,000 HP all on our own with no help. This is why the green plate makes life a lot easier for us. Uh, so you just want to come in here, hit as hard as we can, 
and want to set up a few things that would make our life a little bit easier. Let's see here. Diminish. Probably a good idea because we're not going to cast a lot of elements. And you basically want to be doing what you can to use up all your stamina each round because you'll notice regardless of how far out I was I got a stamina refresh. A stamina refresh is going to be the only way you can keep up with the amount of damage that uh, the enemy is going to deal with. So we do a little bit less because we put... Um, well, I'm not going to do that one yet. We're going to go for Eagle Eye here. And then we're going to go for Strengthen on our next turn. You'll notice how the boss primarily uses green elements. And slow down. He will do that, or I guess it's, technically it would be she. We'll do that for quite a while. I did not get a very good stamina refresh that time. Let's, uh, let's Strengthen and uh, hopefully get a better one this time. Much better. This will just give us a little bit of a boost to the amount of damage that we're dealing here. So one, two, and we'll use our dash and slash early while we have strength and in play. So we got 15,000 HP to take off here. It's going to take a while, but it's not just beating away on the boss. He won't just use those level uh, or those green elements the entire time. Omega Green can do a lot of damage. This is under Diminish. But you can see that doing double that on any given turn means you just have to heal on your turn. And if you have to heal every time, you're not going to... Uh... Nice crit. Yeah, so you can still crit with the Rainbow Weapons. It just doesn't crit all the time. And the Master Mune does not even work on the boss anyway. Go. Eventually, the attack pattern of the boss will change. And I have something to talk about when that happens. You'll notice how I still have my stamina. Or, not my stamina, sorry, my accuracy. One of the interesting things about a solo fight is, for some reason, things seem to last a long time. Eventually, the boss will stop using green elements and the attack pattern will change. And at that point, we'll have a little bit of a, an explanation about why I think that is. Here it is. Upheaval. You remember the order that you're supposed to do the elements. The order of elements in order to use the Chrono Cross starts with yellow. And the next one is red. After that, it's green. And after green, it's blue. After blue, it's black. What I think is happening here is as you're weakening the Time Devourer himself, as you're weakening Lavos, eventually, we, or not we, but eventually, Scala gains some amount of control and she's able to help you along in the fight. Once that happens, once you get all six of them in order here, the boss no longer attacks. And is frozen in fear. This happens on a new game plus or a regular new game. As soon as you get all six in a row properly, 
the rest of the fight is just waiting. While we're at this point, the few things I never clarified. The counter time experiment is the experiment to control time. You kind of heard about this. More specifically, it was a plan to use the Frozen Flame and Chronopolis to return to an era before the Ocean Palace disaster happened in an effort to separate Scala from Lavos. This was Balthazar's plan. He set everything in motion, set up the staff in Chronopolis to continue his plan, and then took the Neowapok, that ship in the library and he went to the modern era to view the effects of Zephyrus. Time Crash is that catastrophic event that sent Chronopolis and the Sea of Eden, which is where they built Chronopolis, back in time. Uh, Chronopolis was built in the Sea of Eden in 2300 AD because of that sea's strange gravitational properties. You saw that magical waterfall that we dispelled and I never really talked about. It was water falling up. It was really weird. Gravity doesn't work properly in the Sea of Eden. That's why they use that place. It was one of these founts of power that one NPC somewhere mentioned. Anyway, the whole process here, it stemmed from a released lock uh, of some sort during the experiment. And this released lock on the frozen flame gave Lavos access to it through time. Somehow they never explained it. And somehow, Balthazar planned all this out. Maybe he used the Neopoc a number of times to find a path that would work. I don't know. Uh, this is all that happens when you defeat the uh, Time Devourer uh, with physical attacks, by the way. You just get this interesting little scene and the bad ending, doing it at the end of the game, leads straight into the credits and that's it. In this version, when we're doing it with Surge alone, welcome to the development room. As with Chrono Trigger, the hardest version of the fight leads you to the development room. We're going to spend a long time here. There's a lot of people to talk to. But I have a bunch more notes to get to, so let's uh, go over those real quick and then I think I'll probably cut it off and then we'll do the actual ending here um, in the next episode. Some of the episodes going forward will be a little on the uh, shorter side just because uh, of how long the endings are, or not long in some cases, and it takes a decent amount of time, as you saw, to get prepped up, to get into position to show those endings off. So. I don't have unlimited time, so I will need to uh, need to pace myself with these endings, even though some of them are like five minutes long. Anyway, these guys are still idiots, uh, as you might expect. Be sure to talk to Pepper or me when you wish to leave. There's a lot of people to talk to. This is a far less interesting area than the end of time in Chrono Trigger was for having, you know, the development room. But there's still a lot of cool stuff to talk over with people here. Anyway, that deals with Balthazar's kind of whole plan there. I don't know how he planned it all out, but he did. And after looking into it a little more in relation to Kid and Scala, I am starting to think that they merged in the ending. Because she was like a daughter clone, I guess for some reason they merged back into one. I don't know. The game's dumb. <laughs> it's great, but it's dumb. Anyway, I think part of this is because we start to see that accent kind of folding into Scala's dialogue partway through the speech, and I was kind of confused if someone else was talking at the time. And then later on, when we see the letter, it's signed Scala Kid Zeal. So I'm guessing that's the final indication that they've merged. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just a, a thought that uh, came up as I was looking further into stuff to make sure I've explained everything properly. The Astral Amulet, they, this never properly got explained. If you look at it in the key items thing, I don't happen to have it right now. I'll put a, an image on screen. 
It's a pouch containing an incomplete version of the time egg, as we saw uh, from Masa and Mune discussing, uh, you know, there's the princess. Is that the time egg? Is it incomplete? So that, that's kind of your indication there. This time egg was actually Scala's pendant. It's that blue one that we saw around baby kid's neck, the end of Chrono Trigger, when Luca found her in the forest. Scala's pendant is the same one as Marley's pendant that we used all throughout Chrono Trigger. It had been passed down through, quote unquote, generations. Witness the ultimate gods pass down the unstrung line for generations! And uh, with that, uh, eventually it ended up in the Guardia line and ended up going all the way down to Marley. I don't know if there's supposed to be any direct connection between Scala and uh, Marley in terms of lineage, but they said that, you know, her distant ancestors were Kino and Isla, so who, who the fuck knows? Anyway, we use Marley's pendant as a trigger to allow us to travel through the time gates. So Kid using that pendant, the Scala's pendant, the same pendant encased in that little bag, it kind of makes sense that it could bring her back in time out of being in danger, as they explained, even if it's unconscious on Kid's part. For the pendant to be able to do this, though, it would have to have some sort of agency in making its own choices. That requires some amount of intelligence. One theory is that Doreen was not in the Sea Swallow, but in Scala's pendant. And when I started to read something that led in this direction, I just smacked myself in the head anime style because, oh my God, that, that makes so much sense. You think about it. It makes way more sense in my theory about Surge being Magus, though that may have been somewhere down the timeline, something they thought of. It definitely not there in the, in the final version of the game. But both the Masamune formed from the ruby knife in Chrono Trigger, and Scala's pendant were both made of Dreamstone, the rare red rock from Chrono Trigger. Both of those objects are from the same time, and if I'm correct on this, and Doreen inhabits the pendant, they're all characters, they all have their own agency, and they're all made of the same material. Perhaps... Dreamstone is itself sentient, maybe? The other aspect is Dreamstone has this unique ability to conduct the energy of Lavos. We know that this is the case because the Mama machine is also made of Dreamstone, and that's what conducts the power of Lavos. In addition to that, our pendant becomes charged when we interface with the mound machine, which is already conducting the power levels. Early in Chrono Trigger, Marley quote unquote dropped the pendant when she was first sent to 600 AD by the telepod accident, and Chrono was somehow able to hold on to it and follow it. The way it was animated, it looked like it disintegrated and then just didn't when Chrono did it. But in both cases, I think it was just wrapped around their necks. This could have been a choice made by Doreen as an agent in that game. Whether that was due to her own decision, whether it was imprinted on her by the quote-unquote entity that they talked about in Chrono Trigger, whether Lavos had some form of influence on it, I have no idea. But, that's just a theory. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not stealing anyone else's bit. Yeah, it's a game theory. Congratulations. There were a bunch of different things that I had thought about over the course of the game that I wanted to talk about. Those were two of the kind of the big ones that uh, I think add to my enjoyment of the game. And I hope they've enjoyed or, you know, added to your enjoyment of the game as well. Because theory crafting with this game is a lot of fun. Anyway, that's all the uh, notes that I wanted to go over. Next time, we will continue through the developer's room. The developer's room, as in Chrono Trigger, 
is a boatload of fun. I always love it when they throw these in games. They had one in uh, Final Fantasy IV, too. That one was also a lot of fun. I think you found a porno mag in one of them or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.